Yeah, Jim, um, let, me tell you, let me tell you a quick Bob Knight story, if you don't mind. Um, I, I, I have to I, love it. I grew up revering Coach Knight. You know, all of us young coaches in the 70s and 80s, you know, we – we, we, you know, we, we studied the motion offense, man-to-man defense. And, of course, I spent eight years in Ohio at Ohio University and Ohio State. And, you know, Bob, Bob was revered as much in Ohio, obviously, uh, because of his ties to the Buckeyes. But um, he actually replaced me on, as Mike knows, on the Big Ten, uh, Big 12 for three years. Um, <laughs> and I, I had to go over to the, the, sh- the schwubby Big East and cover, you know, Syracuse and Villanova and teams like that, but well, that was an upgrade back then, wasn't it? Well, I, I, you know, I, I will leave that as it may be. But uh, the very end of his career at ESPN, they asked me, uh, "Hey, Bob Knight's contract's coming up. It's going to, you know, we're not renewing him or something along those lines. Would you mind working the NIT with him?" And I said, "Absolutely not. I love it." You know, and they didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know. And I say this respectfully to anybody, Jay Billis or anybody. I know I know more about Bob Knight than anybody at ESPN by a by a mile. And 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 Jay played for Coach K, so obviously he's got some stories. But we're doing the NIT in New York, and obviously he, his reviews as an announcer were not phenomenal because he just said, you know, the big white kid or that that kid's really quick. And what number three is a good rebounder, you know? So we we're doing the first NIT game in the garden and Ball goes up in the first couple possessions, and there's a shot taken, and it wasn't a good shot. And I said, Coach, that wasn't a shot you would have let Buckner take. And that, like, that like lit the fuse, you know. And, and then a few minutes later, I said, Coach, what was it like when you brought Army down to the NIT? And he said, Fran, you know, we'd leave at 2.30, get on the train down here, and stop at Needix for a pregame meal. That was an old hot dog place under the garden. And I engaged him the whole night. And uh, he's drawing plays on a napkin, not realizing it's not a telestrator. He goes, Fran, I think they got to move the guy here. Now, no one on TV can see this, you know. But at the end of that night, the semifinals at the NIT, he gets up and slaps me on the back, which he's done 10,000 times to people, and cool. said, that, that was really enjoyable. And the cherry on the, uh, the icing on the cake was Pat texted me, and we become friends through the years. And he said, thanks for taking care of my dad. And that meant a lot to me because, um, you know, I mean, obviously Coach Knight can be polarizing, but those of us who know and been on both sides of him know there's a there's a softness there too that a lot of people don't know is there. And so that was, that was fun. I, I can imagine because it, sometimes it takes the right person to deal with. It's like Jason Benetti. But <laughs> if there was no Jason Benetti, there would be no Bill Walton. Uh, very true. Somebody, somebody's got to drive that train because otherwise it would go out of control. I call uh, it everybody. a lion tamer. You're a lion tamer. <laughs> that's, that's very much it. Um, are you telling me before you move on? Are you yeah. telling me that this is him under control? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> hey, I, you know, hey, another, I, another time. I had said something that saw, it was like one of those uh, someone I said something, someone else heard it. They told somebody else. They told Coach Knight. And it was this was when he was at Texas Tech. And he, he said, I don't want him coming to the shoot around tomorrow. Well, they were playing Kansas, so it really wouldn't have mattered because it was in Allen Fieldhouse. I think they got beat by 30. <laughs> but, I, you know, like I'm saying, like, do I go to the shoot around or not? And I called my boss at ESPN. And he said, do what you want. And I said, no, nope, I know Coach Knight. I'm going to the shoot around. And so the first 30 minutes of the shoot around, he's looking over at me from the other end of the court. Like, what is this guy doing here? And finally, during a water break, he comes barging down to me. He goes, hey, you think we ought to recruit junior college players? And I go, yeah, coach, you're in West Texas. There's about 20 of them there. He goes, yeah, me too. And that was his way of saying, you had the guts to come in here. So we're all good now, you know? <laughs> yeah, it seems sometimes it took that to uh, to get his – respect i guess yeah, you'd say yeah, uh yeah. because he's uh take it as you uh or leave it kind of a person um i did not have the fortune to to know him like you did but uh i did get to when i was very young and in my early part of my career i did get to ask one of those questions in the press a post-game press conference that ended the press conference uh <laughs> so he's like ah that's that's stupid i'm out uh, so I got one of those once. So well, that's enjoying that. Answer. Knowing Coach Knight, that was probably a really good question. 
it, it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah. plus, it's but you had to ask questions that you already knew the answer to. Yeah. But nobody cared to hear me say it. They want to hear Bob Knight say it. You know, one, um, more, one more quick Coach Knight story, if you don't mind. Um, and never. I hope your listeners don't mind. I know it's, you know. They love it. I know. You know, I was at Ohio. And my, I think I've told Mike this story, but Mike, we played we played Indiana when I was at Ohio U in like 85. And I, I don't know, Steve was on the team. I think Dockage told me later it was one of his best games. I think he had like nine points. And uh, But we go there on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> And, we've uh, lost Mike. We've lost Mike. <laughs> no, I mean he, that's what he told me. I didn't say that. He told me that. But yeah. but we but but Danny Knee was a Digger Phelps guy, and Coach Knight and Digger were very close, going back to the days in New York at Fordham and Army. And I I know he respected Digger because he didn't cheat. And we go over, and we had a really good team at Ohio U. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Jim, but J Ron Harper was at Miami. Oh yeah, and uh, Ron Hunter actually. Eddie Schilling from Lebanon, um, Miami and Ohio U. We were the two best teams in the league at that time and ch changing off winning the Mac every year. So we go over on a Saturday afternoon with a really good young team. We lose like 91 77 and coach Knight uh, comes down to us, shakes our hand. And he says to Danny knee, call me tomorrow. I want to tell you about your team. And so it's a, it's a Saturday. Uh, the late Billy Hahn from Mishawaka, who, my dear friend, um, uh, he and I go to church on Sunday morning. We meet Danny at noon, you know, we're, we're getting ready, you know, to talk to Danny and he had talked to coach Knight for two hours and coach Knight broke down our team. He scout, you know, he basically said, Hey, this kid's really good. You need to get him more shots. We could guard this play really well. You need to move this guy over to the left block. And he basically gave us a, a scouting report and Danny took everything to heart. We, and no one would ever know that. Like, what a pony opposing coach would call you to tell you how to improve your team. And that's a typical behind the scenes, Bob Knight story that, you know, never gets, you know, never gets told when you think of all the negative things, you know, about him. So uh, coach is coach in that regard. Well, he loved to, he, I think he just, he loved the game of basketball and he loved the challenge of it, you yeah. know, he was a history major. That's kind of you know, Dick E. V. gave him the the general title, but history was a big thing for him, and and studying that, and I I I would have to imagine that somehow along the way, some of those strategies filtered into what he did. I mean, the motion offense uh, th that I learned from from talking to so many IU players that was an offense based simply on, on decision-making, nonstop decision-making by the offensive player. And it's like, wow, uh, it was just constantly changing. And it's like, how, how the hell do you defend that? Uh, but well, I'm wondering, I, why why do not people run more of it now? I mean, they're like – Well, because very few people can teach it like he did, quite honestly. And I majored in American history with a minor in military history because of two people, Bob Knight and Woody Hayes. And uh, – because I grew up in the 70s and – I knew I wasn't going to be a PE major. I I, I left uh, the first bio lab, first day of school, that we were cutting up frogs on my first day of college. I said, I'm out of here. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I majored in American history, uh, quite honestly, because of Coach Knight. You know, and I became a Civil War buff because of him. So he had a he had a great influence on me, although he probably doesn't know it, and most people don't. Because I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and here's a guy from Orville, Ohio. But, Mike, I don't mean to dominate this, but. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're you're. You're dominating. You're dominating like Zach Eady, though. You know, with all the good stuff. Oh man.